Hey everybody, it's Tiffany from Quilters Workshop and today's video is going to be what I've done so far for the pages of the busy book or the quiet book that I'm working on. Some of the blocks instructions have more detail than others in this little tutorial, um, but so far I have shared 10 pages that I've included, not including the cover. So with the front and back cover and the pages, there's 12 blocks that you have to prepare for this. So in this portion of the video, I've just gone through the pages, but not actually how to assemble the pages and create the actual book. Okay, so I'm working on the page that is going to be about matching shapes. So the base fabric, which is actually just a regular quilting fabric, it's not felt, that I cut 9x9, nine nine, so that's this piece right here, and then the board is cut 5x7, and that's just one layer of felt, and then this part is going to be the pocket, and that is 3 inches tall and 5 inches across. Um, so I've got those pinned into place at the moment. What I'm going to do is stitch this on. I'm probably going to use a zigzag stitch. Um, to go all the way around that to keep that nice and secure and then for the pocket I'm going to do just the two sides because the top you want to be able to put the shapes back in it uh, when they're not being used and then the bottom you can leave open because when you go to join the pages together it'll get closed up you can sew it if you really feel like you need to but trust me it'll get sewed uh, shut when we join all of the pages together so then all of the shapes that I cut, and I'm not fantastic at this, but this square just for size reference is one and a half inches. Um, and then when I cut all of the other shapes out, what I did was I cut one and a half inch squares from all of the different colors. And then, so that would kind of help me keep them relatively like similar to in size. So then I cut a circle, a triangle, an octagon, a heart, and a star. So, um, I'm going to use these to mark outlines because I want to stitch the outline of the shape onto the felt. I'm going to use black thread and I'm going to use a stretch stitch, which is the kind of stitch on your sewing machine that jumps back and forth. So I'm working on another page for the busy book. And as I mentioned before, the base of everything is being cut nine by nine. So this is just a regular piece of quilter's cotton. I have a couple of clouds over here, sort of have like a little secondary piece that I want um, layered behind the main cloud to kind of pop up a little bit. The top layer of this is just white felt and I have a layer of batting that's cut and that's cut just a hair smaller then the white felt and I have steam seam in between those layers to hold them together. The batting is mostly because white felt is kind of thin and because I'm using really bright colorful zippers if I layer this over top you'll see the ends of the zippers which I don't want to happen and also you want it to have a little bit of uh, puffiness to it so I'm going to just set those aside for now. Um, I did buy six zippers, but I think I'm only going to use five um, red. This is supposed to be orange. There weren't any orange zippers where I was, so I just got this kind of corally color, yellow, green, and blue. Um, I'm going to start with the yellow one. Okay, so I actually ended up pinning all of them at once um, on a 45, and I'm just going ahead and stitching each side of the zipper down. If you don't know how to install a zipper, this isn't really like a real zipper installation, but you'll need to use your zipper foot just like this. And you're basically just trying to stitch um, each of these little sides, like the tape of the zipper. You just want to butt those up so there's about an eighth of an inch between the tape of one zipper and the teeth of the next zipper and just kind of stitch like about a sixteenth of an inch away um, very close to the edges and just work your way along. You'll need to shift the zipper pulls up and down as they get in your way. Okay so now that I have all of the zippers sewn on 
I've just pinned my two pieces of cloud in place so that it covers the top portion of the zippers and then I'm going to um, change my foot back to a regular one and use a blanket stitch. Okay so for this page we have two little mittens and the idea was also learning left and right but also spelling. Um, so I bought these wooden letters from the Dollar Tree and I sewed a strip of Velcro so you can see the stitching lines on it there. What I've done is I've used those same little fastener dots that I've been using this whole time. I actually cut them in half so that it's a little bit easier to set on there. And again, even though they have adhesive backings, I'm still hot gluing them on just to keep them a little bit stronger. So this page isn't actually fully complete because the package of letters only came with one of each letter and I didn't know what pages I was doing necessarily when I picked up some of my supplies. I just sort of grabbed things that I thought would work. So I still need to go get another package so that I can have a T down here because it only came with one. So um, I can pick that up in the future and then um, finish off that page. But other than that, this page is done. Okay, so now I'm working on the one that's going to have the puppy with the little collar on it. So this is actually just a cat collar that I picked up because none of the puppy ones had little clips that were small enough to fit on the apple case. So as always, the base is 9x9. Nine and then I just used a coloring sheet to draw out a dog and um, so I cut the head and the body, two separate pieces, and then the tongue I just stuck under there. And I realized that if you're not familiar with using steam -a -seam, uh, what you need to do is, uh, so you can get it by the roll or in packets like this, so that's what I'm working with there, comes in sheets like this. It has paper on both sides. Uh, one side actually has a grid as well. And then there's the adhesive in between. So if you're worried about um, which direction something is in, you need to mirror image it when you trace it on the paper. If not, it doesn't matter. Um, so after you draw the pieces out, you'll peel one side of the paper off and stick it to the wrong side of your material. So if I was going to cut something out of this pink, I would draw the tongue shape, for example, on here, uh, peel off one side, stick the adhesive down on the reverse side of the fabric, so here. So then you would basically have your fabric, the adhesive layer, and then one more paper layer. And then you would finish cutting it out, the shape that it needs to be, lift off the opposite side of the paper, and then finger press it where it needs to be before you go ahead and iron it. So this is the little nose that I have left. So as you can see, I cut it out and then I'm going to lift this paper backing off and then place it down. Okay, so that's what the glue looks like. So you can see the fabric on one side, glue on the other. I took the paper backing off and then you just place it wherever you would like it to be. So I'm gonna just place it right here. And then what you would do is iron this whole thing as per the instructions on the packet. Um, and then you can stitch it however you'd like. So you can leave it uh, just raw, like if you were using the steam seam maybe for a wall hanging or something that wouldn't get handled a lot, you wouldn't necessarily have to do any edge stitching. Um, it would just stay, you know, on its own. But because this is going to be handled a lot, you definitely need to stitch it somehow. So I use a blanket stitch. I think I mentioned that in a previous clip, but if your machine doesn't have a blanket stitch, you could do a very small um, zigzag, just play with your settings a little bit before you go ahead and do it. And then worst case scenario, you could do a straight stitch, but I would recommend doing uh, some sort of overcast stitch. And then before we iron this, um, I'm actually going to cut this to size because I want to be able to tuck the ends underneath this applique piece just to make it a little bit stronger. Okay. So for this block, this is the block that has the puppy dog face on it and it has a little cat collar here so that kids can play with the buckle opening and closing it and then I've left the little bell on there too just because I thought that might be kind of satisfying to play with. 
Um, the nose and the tongue are blanket stitched on, so those are fastened down. Um, but I do have little googly eyes, so um, to complete this page, all I have to do is just glue these in place. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now this little page is also complete. Okay, so now I'm at a point where I have most of my pages done, all of the sewing parts, and I have to go ahead and add the finishing touches for, um, I don't know how to describe it. I guess like the pieces that are actually movable, the parts that are actually going to be played with. So this one is the tree. So the trunk, I used regular quilting fabric, and you can see my blanket stitching on there as well. The top part of the tree is felt, and then the little basket opens at the top um, so that you can put the extra pieces in there when you're not using them. And I'm using these little buttons that are apples. Now, the yellow ones and the green ones make sense. <laughs> But don't ask me why some of them are purple. Um, none of them are red. But regardless, I have five of those. And what I'm going to do is I have this little package of fastener dots. So these do have adhesive on the back of them already. They're just little circles of Velcro. And I'm going to be using the, um, the scratchy part. Um, there's probably like a word for the loop part and the other part of the velcro that would normally go together in a pair but because the top part of the tree is made of felt the scratchier part of the velcro will stick to that just fine so I'm going to put one of these on the back side of every apple so that it's something that um, little kids can put on and then take off and put in the little basket um, so these do have adhesive but just in terms of making sure that that doesn't lift and that maybe holds a little bit better for longer, I'm also going to put a little bit of hot glue on the back of them as well. Okay, so I've finished hot gluing the Velcro to the back of each of these buttons. And so now those will stick onto the felt. And then you can put the extras inside, whoops, the little basket there. And because the basket is felt, it would also stick to the front as well. And then if this was ever being held up vertical, see it sticks to the felt. Okay, so for the page with the giraffe, this has a couple steps that we still have to finish up here. So the block itself right now looks like this. So I have the face, the ears, and three different colors of ribbon that are stitched across his neck. So I have red, yellow, and green. And then I have coordinating little bow ties that um, is sort of just like a color matching. So you'll know to put the red bow tie on the red ribbon and then the yellow one and the green. I do have little googly eyes that I need to put on as well. Um, and what I'm thinking, because these are kind of thin, like they're just one layer of felt, I think I'm actually going to just use this black felt that I have left and glue those two layers together just so that it makes it a little thicker. So I might glue that on and then cut it out afterwards. And then I'm also going to put a button on the top as well. Just, it's sort of decorative, but then also sort of something hard to grip to pick them up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that.
so I'm just going to glue this first. So now that I have the yellow glued to the black backing, I'm just going to go ahead and cut that out. That just helps make it feel a little bit more sturdy. And then to finish that off, we're going to put the button on the middle part. So you need just a little bit of glue. Now that we have each of the bow ties um, with their backing and their little decorative button on the front. Now we're going to get our Velcro again and this time we're going to be using both sides. We need the soft side and we need the scratchy side as well. So. You're going to put one of the sides on each of the ribbons And now we're going to just make sure that you put the opposite side of the Velcro on the back of the bow ties. And I almost forgot to add the eyes on. So I have much smaller ones than what I used for the dog. Okay, so now we have all of our parts on. Eyes are on. Um, these were applique. So now all of our pieces can either be placed directly on our little guy um, or you can also just sort of keep them off to the side somewhere as well just like that that is so cute there he is okay so the shape matching page is probably one of my favorite pages so this part is made of felt and I've already done a clip more detail about the size that I cut this and how I went ahead and made it. Um, but these little pieces, just like I was talking about with the giraffe bow ties, are kind of a, a little bit flimsy um, because they're just one layer of felt. So I think I'm going to do the same thing and back them all in the black um, just to give them a little bit more body. Um, and then of course while they're not being used up there, there is a pocket at the bottom that you can put them into. Okay, so this block is one of the last blocks that I have to do. So this was just an applique that I purchased. It is an iron-on applique, but those never actually hold that well. So once I'm finished this, I am going to go around and stitch him on just because it's really crucial that that stays in place as all of these little pieces of rickrack um, are underneath of him. So we need to make sure that holds really well. For the base, so these are actually not attached to anything yet. So the balloons that are there are just sort of 
um, place markers because what's going to happen is I've made these separate balloons and again I've backed them with black so that kind of seems to be what works best for me right now and what I'm going to do is the opposite end of this rickrack I'm going to put it in here in between the layers so these are not attached together yet these two layers of felt so when I glue those layers together I'm going to make sure that that rickrack is inserted pretty far um, and make sure that it's nice and strong in there and then that way these pieces will be able to um, hang um, and they won't like fall off the page or anything like that so they'll stay fixed um, and then this is just sort of a color matching so that the blue balloon will stick down. I'm not going to put any Velcro on the opposite sides of the balloons because the felt will just stick to the felt base. So felt sticks to felt really well, so that's no problem. Okay, so the best way that I found to line this up properly is I'm going to lay just the base of the red balloon down and then taking this end of the rickrack lay that on and we're going to just put a drop of glue here on the black lay the rickrack in that drop of glue press it down okay and then we're going to drizzle the glue around the outline make sure you don't go too close to your ends because when you press it'll ooze out and then just lay the actual color piece of the balloon on top to kind of complete the sandwich. Just again, making sure that your rickrack is really attached well in there. Okay. Um, and we're just going to do that to all of the balloons. Hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Okay. So now that I have all of the balloons done, so as you can see, you can pick them up just like that and place them down. I wanted to just add these wooden numbers so I showed using the wooden letters earlier on some of the other pages and it also came with some numbers so I just thought for fun I would just put um, a number on each balloon. I, I'm not going to make these removable or anything but I think while you're placing um, the correct color of each balloon down on its right little home spot I think it would be kind of fun to visually have little numbers as well so um, I'm going to just glue each of these down so just carefully apply some glue so I finished all of the balloons and added the little wooden letters on so you can match them up to their correct place. And then of course, if they're not being used, these will just dangle freely. Okay, so um, like I mentioned, I'm just going to stitch around this frog though. Okay friends, so let's have a little peek here because I've been working away at a couple of things. I worked on the embroidery this afternoon, so for the embroidery I just did a regular piece of fabric, um, you know, like just one solid piece I mean. Um, this font, so the top and the bottom, is called Typist. Uh, my embroidery machine is the Janome Memory Craft 11,000. And this was Typist, which is a built-in font, and I did size small at 120%. So for those of you who don't know, uh, at least on my embroidery machine, on the size small font, I can either increase it 120% or decrease something to 80%, but I can't go beyond that. So a size medium was a little bit too big so I went for the small and then for the word quiet I used the hollow block font just because I thought it was a little playful so that's what I did for the front cover now the inside page is where um, I'm going to put these wooden letters like you've seen earlier in the video I used them for something else too so I'm going to put 
the opposite side of the Velcro here and then spell out the name for the little boy that this is going to. His name's Jackson. So we can pretend that that's what that's going to look like. Now, um, so, and this was the uh, first grade font, I think it's called, and this was size small. I don't think I enlarged it at all, so 100% on that font there. Now on this page, I used the same font and the same thread. I used uh, a piece of blue for about like one third and then um, this leaf fabric for the rest. So I made a pouch separately and then just top stitched it right on to the page. So I could have made the base one whole color. I didn't only because this fabric I wanted to incorporate and it uh, it wasn't long enough to be the whole base of the page, but you could cut just your regular nine by nine square embroider at the top. Um, you could make the pouch built in. Um, I'm not gonna go into too much detail about this because if you, are familiar with my channel. Some of my um, videos are really step-by-step -step videos and some of them are just sort of inspirational videos. So this is sort of a combination of inspiration slash a tutorial because I'm sharing more than what I would if it was an inspirational video. But for most sewers who are a little bit more advanced, you can just kind of do whatever you would normally do to make a little pouch or you could look at this and you know exactly what I did. Um, anyway, so I have this little zipper here that the inside, I'm going to put all of the extra letters that came in the pack. So I'm going to put Velcro on those too, just in case this ever gets gifted to someone else or if the mom has another baby um, and she, you know, maybe that, that child, um, it'll get passed down to just so they can spell out their name. So I don't want to include only the letters for his name. So this page is where all of the extra letters are going to be stored. The next page, we have the rainbow that I talked about the tutorial for this. And I also talked about the tutorial for our little giraffe friend. And then the next page is going to look like this. So these are all of our shapes here with the little pocket with all the little shapes that you can put on. Our apple tree. I think I talked about that one too. Uh, this is left and right. Right is still missing a T because I still need to go to the store and get another package of these same letters because the pack only came with one for each letter in the alphabet. So that's the one T that it came with. So I need to buy a second pack to get a second letter T. So I'm not silly. I know how to spell the word right. I just need to go get the second pack. And because we're all in self-isolation right now, I don't know when I'm going to be able to do that. This page, I don't know if I talked about, but this is a jellyfish. And this is sort of like a sensory toy because they can feel the ribbon and move the beads up and down, but it's also for counting. So there's one, two, three, four, five different numbers of beads on each ribbon. And then the googly eyes and then the next page has our puppy dog that I talked about with his little clip. And then this one, this is probably one of my favorite ones with the different little numbers. And you can also match the colors on this page. So that's kind of a two for one. And then the back of the book, I just chose this plaid. So I'm going to do a part two video just because this current video is a little long. So in part two, after you finish making all of the blocks in this video, if you're following along, you'll jump over to part two, which will hopefully be up within a few days or so. And in that video, I'll show you how to join the pages together and how to assemble the groups of pages into an actual completed book. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed it. I know it's a little bit long, but it is a pretty time consuming project. Each page takes quite a while, especially if you're not experienced in sewing. And as always, all of my contact information is down below. So I do post over on my social media channels, probably Instagram the most frequently. But if you have any questions, you can either leave a comment down below or sh shoot me an email at quilters.workshop at gmail.com. And thanks so much for watching.